Welcome to Podcasts Across Worlds. I'm your host, Lehua Superfina. And I'm the co-host, Spirit, aka Papa Fulu. We are people who like to read a lot of manga and watch a lot of anime. We realize that we all like similar titles and we could talk about them for hours. So here we are in Podcasts Across Worlds to talk about anime, manga, and everything else we're interested in. This time you recommended Magical Girls Sight. Why did you recommend that one? Because it's completely separate from everything else that we've discussed on the podcast. And like we've done action orientated, we've done slice of life. So I thought, fuck it, let's go horror. And also the fact of you just recently coming into the whole horror thing when you like played Outlast and Resident Evil. So I thought, hmm, horror horror anime. Yeah. And when I was thinking about what you could watch and everything like that, instead of thinking of something slight or anything like that, that's only kind of horror and everything like that, I thought, no, let's go fucking full-on psychological fucked up stuff. Oh, it so, is fucked up. It is fucked yeah. up from the from the first episode. Yeah, so I thought, fuck it, Magical Girl Sight. When I first saw Magical Girl Sight, I was like, oh my god. This is fucking dark, like shit. Like normally, whatever was seen is shown later on in an anime, like as flashbacks. Like, oh, this happened, that happens. Like, no, fucking, you're gonna see how hard it is for this girl. It's like, okay, this is what you should be expecting throughout the whole anime. There was <laughs> extreme bullying. There was attempt rape. There was extreme abuse i was like oh my god torture murder it kind of covers a whole load of different genre like horror genres and rolls them into one so instead of easing in i thought deep dive <laughs> <laughs> so because of that first episode i was expecting the whole anime to be like that but then it just tapered off Mm, it you have your comedy moments, you have your slice of life moments. You see like friendship building between the different magical girls. But because of what you see in like the first couple episodes and everything like that, you know there's still that backdrop, so it's kinda like taking away from what you're actually seeing, like you see you don't just see a happy moment and think, oh, this is a happy moment. You kind of see, okay, so now what's going to go wrong? It doesn't ever give you a chance to know that happiness is actual happiness. It, you know that something's going to be a part of it. For people who don't know what Magical Girl Sight is about, it's about these girls who experience unfortunate things. They've experienced shit. Like, they are miserable. Some of them are thinking about ending their lives. Some of them are in despair. Some of them are just miserable. Some of them are torturing someone. <laughs> Somehow, there is this site called Magical Girl Site. It gives them a message like, oh, poor unfortunate soul. And gives them a stick, a magical stick. And the show starts out with this girl named Aya Asagiri. She's pathetic. I thought she was really pathetic. The first episode shows her being bullied. And then it shows that her brother, who's under a lot of pressure to be perfect, to have great grades, he vents out on her by beating her up. He ties her hands behind her back and beats her up. That is sick. I was like so disturbed by that. And, you know, she has no one to talk to. No one to talk to about her bullying. No one to talk to about the abuse at home. And then her bullies uh, try to get this upperclassman to rape her. It's like, oh my God. And then she gets this stick, which is like the shape of a gun. And... She uses it on the senpai. Finally, she uses it on the senpai after running away from him. Because as I was watching, I'm like, use the fucking gun! 
<laughs> I don't know what this does, but use it. And she was so hesitant. She's like, no, I don't want to hurt people. I'm like, just fucking use it or die. <laughs> And that's how I felt about her. <laughs> and she uses it. Upperclassman who was about to rape her and the other bully who set it up, they just disappear. And she finds out that they were killed by what was it? A train? A train a tram. They died at by being hit by a train at the train tracks. Which was the place where she was going to kill herself. Oh, and not to mention there's animal cruelty. Oh my gosh, that was a that was another thing. Uh, right before she was about to get raped, one of the bullies was like, recognize this, and they're holding like a collar with a bell on it. And that was the exact collar that she gave the stray cat that she's been feeding. Mm. So the cat like, were killed by the train as well. Yeah, which they killed by throwing by the train. So it's like, oh my god. This is so disturbing. There's just like all kinds of disturbing stuff going on here. But Spirit recommended this. I'll keep watching. I'll keep watching. <laughs> it, it must be great after this. <laughs> well, I see it as payback for Violet Evergarden. <laughs> <laughs> and then following that episode... Uh, the bully who died from Aya using the stick, mm -hmm. she's upset. She wants revenge. And so she goes after Aya and is like, you did something. And uh, I need to mention the name of the um, bully. I believe her name was Serena. Serena. Her name mm -hmm. was Serena. So Serena is like, you did something. I know you did. And while watching this, I'm thinking motherfucker you're the one who bullied her you didn't think karma was gonna happen hello <laughs> but she's still mad like she has no guilt she has like no remorse be like oh maybe if we didn't bully this girl none of this would have happened no she's like no it's your fault no accountability none making me hurt me not hurt making me hate serena more i'm like this Bitch, like my emotion is high here, like really high. <laughs> like I'm filled with so much like hate, <laughs> annoyance. I wanted people to die. And then here it comes to you know using her stick, which stops time. So as Sabrina was about to like shove a blade into Aya's mouth, so you know stops time takes that blade and slices Serena's neck. I'm like, thank God, finally! You know, if you're going to show all these extremes, someone has to do something. The good guys better retaliate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, the good guys can't be like, oh no, I don't want to hurt people. No, I'm a good person. I don't do this, which I was doing! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, girl... It's kill or be killed. <laughs> uh, and like, I was like, no, I don't want to hurt people. No, I didn't hurt those people. Like, no, Aya, you're the reason why that bully and that potential rapist died. You should be happy they're dead. But no, she's filled with remorse. No, she's filled with guilt. She's like, no, I don't want to get in trouble. It doesn't matter if you get in trouble, Aya. No one likes you. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting incredibly, and I'm so glad you watched this. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Your parents don't care about you. Your classmates don't care about you. Who cares if you get in trouble? Get wild. No one's paying attention to you. <laughs> Uh, those are my thoughts but she was like so scared of of upsetting people when it's you, girl you already upset people what more can you do <laughs> but when you see everything that she's gone through you can understand why she's as timid 
as she is, because she walks around thinking, if this person notices me, are they going to be the ones that hurt me? If that I stand out, what's going to happen? And everything like that. I, the way she, you see this character and what happens to her and everything like that, you can see why she's broken. I, when you see your brother hitting her, it's not just like a quick punch or anything like that. He's punching her in a stomach as hard as he can to the point where she's throwing up and everything like that. And she even says to him, please don't do this and everything like that. Because if you do this, I may not get my period and everything like that. So the, the brother don't care. And I will say, he gets his fucking comeuppance. I'm so glad. And, but throughout the series and everything like that, and because you do see Aya's relationship with Suno grow and everything like that, she finally has someone that she can talk to. She finally has that confidence to talk to someone. And it is kind of nice to see that throughout the series and then meeting the other magical girls, even though some of them are... A bit fucked up. <laughs> Is it Najimi, the pop star? Oh, Najimi. So when Najimi came in, I want to say the show did get lighter because there's more comedy in it. I was really curious why Najimi became a magical girl. Her story was her dad was in debt. He killed himself and then... The debtors were going to use her to uh, make money by prostituting her. So Najimi went through shit, but she is a successful person and she's still bubbly. I'm wondering it's because she wants things to be like that. Like she's like the extreme. Everything's going to be fine. Kind of like I don't see it. It's not happening kind of thing. You do get to see under the bubbly side. You get to see the true Najimi. Which is crazy. She, oh, okay. Okay, so you know how we were talking about, about the brother, mm -hmm. uh, Ka Kaname, and how much of an asshole he is, and we just want him to die? <laughs> like, we want him to get his karma. We wanted justice on him. It took a while, though. It took a while. And when Najimi meets Kaname, Aya's brother, and she's like, oh my gosh, he's so handsome. And she fawns over him. I'm like, no, don't, don't like him. No, he's the bad guy. But she's like so superficial that she falls for his looks and his facade. I'm like, oh. Girl. Which he does end up using to his own gain. Oh, she got played oh, so hard. She got played so hard. I was so disappointed in her. I was like, you stupid bitch. <laughs> so um, what happens in the story is something is going to happen, like a apocalypse kind of thing. The world's going to end and only the strongest will survive. And this was told by the administrators of the website. We have this girl named Rina who was told by the administrator this, this fact. And Rina's like, okay, I need to be the strongest. I need to get as much power as possible. How do I do that? I'll take the sticks of other magical girls. So that was an interesting part of the story. It was like a mystery. It was like, oh, who is the magical girl killer? And they look for her, and it turns out to be Rena. And Rena, okay, even though she's a psycho bitch, I liked her. <laughs> <laughs> if Rena kind of reminds me of Yuno Gisai in Future Diary. I haven't seen Future Diary. Who's what's that person like? <laughs> uh, super Yandere. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Uh, for the viewers, um, explain what that is. Uh, well, I wouldn't. Rena's not exactly Yandere, but the personality kind of reminds me of that. And for people who don't know what Yandere is, 
they have an obsession with someone and they will do anything for that said someone. And it sometimes comes down to if they can't have that person, no one will, which could lead to them killing their obsession. So what I liked about Rena was um, it was the episode where they capture Rena. Aya was stuck with Rena in this type of barrier, this boxed barrier. So Yuna was telling Aya, Aya, use your stick. And Aya's like, no, I don't want to hurt her. And Rena says, are you seriously going to be like this when you're about to die? I'm like, you go, girl, Rena. You see what I'm thinking. <laughs> Call her out. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I was liking Rena because she's saying everything I was thinking. I was like, yes. The most cold and calculated out of the lot of them is Suno. She knows what she's doing. And for people who don't know, using the sticks uses the magical girl's life force. So the more they use them, the quicker they're going to die. And you find out Suno's time's nearly up. Which leads to kind of a sad moment towards the end of the series. But <laughs> I can't believe that. So I take it you ended up enjoying the series. I did. I did. I did end up enjoying the series. Uh, I liked Suyonu's story of how she became a magical girl. So from from the get-go, I liked Suyuno because she was the, we kill the bad people. We kill these people who do horrible things, criminals, murderers, sex offenders, all the trash of the world. We kill them. That's what we do. Yes. We we need this realism. Like, yes, we killed the bad people. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like her resolve. And we find out why she has this resolve. And it's because she got a stick because her family were murdered by a intruder. She couldn't do anything. The intruder was a sick bastard. He said, I'll just wait until you get older. Then I'll play with you. It's like, oh, disgusting man. And she got older. She found him. She imprisoned him and has been torturing him ever since. She's been torturing him slowly. Like she's never satisfied. Like she's keeping him alive. Like she's like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to give you. A swift kill. No, you're going to endure all this pain. All the pain that I'm feeling until I'm satisfied. And she's never satisfied. Like, you see the tools next to him. You see the blood on it. The guy has no more teeth. It's like every day she took out one tooth. Uh, I, it felt very satisfying to see that. Even though it was really dark. Yeah, that scene did kind of remind me of the movie Law Abiding Citizen where he tracks down the person that killed his wife and his daughter. And in the movie, you see he has him on a... He finds him, drugs him, knocks him out, puts him on a bench, and ties him up and everything, and has a mirror above him. So he sees everything that's going on. That's the closest comparison I've thought when I've watched any anime is that movie. But, and I'd say also the name of it is very misleading. Like, oh, when think, so misleading. Like, you think of, like, Magical Girl Sight, you expect something to see, like, Sailor Moon sort of thing. Yeah. Where it's just, like, Magical Girls and all that kind of stuff. And when I... Well, the re how I came across the series is there's a website called Random Anime Generator. And every now and again, me and my friends used to just each go on it, generate a random anime, and see what we'd vote, and we'd all vote for one. And <laughs> the other two just sounded really boring. And then there was Magical Girl Sight, and 
the description was even misleading, and we thought, oh, fuck it. So we watched it, and <laughs> it, it was one of those holy fucking shit moments. And after that, I just ended up binging the series, and I've also read the... It's kind of like a prequel manga. It's a spiritual predecessor to it. It's what came out before Magical Girl Sight Manga came out. It's called Magical Girl Apocalypse. Oh. Which is also incredibly dark. And you see these sort of things, and it was one of those that caught me by surprise. And I'm glad I actually got past the name and actually sat down and watched it because it's one of those that stick with you. I I'll, I think I'll remember this show till day I die because of it's one of the, it is one of those that's that fucked up. It's hard to forget, and it is worth a watch. It's kind of nice to see the opposite end of certain genres. Like you can see, like uh, was it Madoka Magica? I don't think that's nowhere near as dark as Magical Girl Sight. But everyone says, oh, that's a really dark one that you need to watch. No. I wouldn't say that's anywhere near as dark as this. No, no. If, like, Magical Girl Sight tops it, I want to say. Like, yeah, it's, like, Madoka is dark, but not as dark. Like, Magical Girl Sight is way darker. Much darker. Um, I didn't see the whole thing of Magical Girl Madoka, but I did not see people being killed per se i've seen witches being defeated but i didn't see attempt rape i didn't see people slicing their wrists to heal others you know yes that happened in magical girl site there's a girl whose stick is a blade and she has to cut herself because when she uses that the blood that comes out after cutting herself with that stick heals the person Okay, yeah, yeah. The, this girl got this stick because she likes to cut herself because she's going through shit. That was not in Magical Girl Madoka. That's also why I wanted to cover this because, like I know we've done, we like I said, we've done Slice of Life, we've done Action. But I wanted to go to like the opposite end of that. I wanted to... Not just take a gentle walk into this sort of genre, but like a f- full on hop, s- hop, skip, and jump into it, like a full dive into it, so we get to see the other side of it. Because I genuinely believe this is a- an amazing show. Endings of it, me. Endings a little bit of a letdown. I will say that, but I don't think that should put someone off from watching this. It's. If you like shows that I've got character development, that I've got a story, that I've got decent antagonists, because I genuinely think Nana is an amazing villain in this. Why? The the mannerisms, the portrayal, the slow monotone nature of how they talk. And like I told you, that intro of the episode where you actually have Nana sing the lyrics to the intro, and how dark and twisted they, it makes it. I've when it comes to these sort of stories, a story is only as good as the villain. Like you could have an amazing story, but if there's a piss poor villain in it, you're not really going to care what happens to them. And the, what you see Nana do and everything like that, you want to see Nana get defeated. You want to see the administrators get taken down because of how well they're written. When we were first watching this show we only knew about one administrator and that was nana and oh man they were so creepy they were in black and white and they look like old school drawings like they look like they were from i don't know like post world war ii pre-world war ii like they were like old school some of them even had like those freaky masks and first we think there's only one magical girl site, one administrator. 
Then we learned there's many, and it's like, oh shit, there's more. Okay, wait, how many magical girls are there? How many sticks are there? And the reason why I'm asking this is because Rena was trying to collect as much sticks as possible to be the most powerful magical girl so she can survive that apocalypse kind of thing at the end of the countdown. It's like, what if there were others like her? You know, Rena, how, how did you know? How would you have known that you would have been the last survivor? And it, it seems like Nana was playing her too. Mm -hmm. Like Nana was manipulating her. And when Rena wasn't ab available, she found another girl to turn into a magical girl and make her her puppet. And you know who it was? It was the fucking bully, Serena. Um, I didn't realize this when I was first watching it, but the names of the administrators is numbers in Japanese. I didn't notice that. I yeah, wasn't even looking at their names. I was like, that yeah, when, when bad When you hear the names, you get Ichi, Ni, San, Shi, Go. And Nana is the number seven. seven. So yeah, and each of the administrators is a number. And I didn't realize that my first time watching. And then when you hear mention, I think, Juachi, which is 18. I was kind of wondering, how many are there? Right? And it's a case of when a... I think it mentions it in the anime, or it just alludes to it. When a magical girl dies, they become an administrator. They explained that at the end. I was thinking about that as I was watching the show because at first they were only showing like female administrators. And I was like, all right, were, were they magical girls before? I wonder if they were. And then they showed at the end a magical girl becoming an admin administrator. They're like, congratulations. You met the qualifications. I'm like, I fucking knew it. <laughs> because Nana looked like a schoolgirl. Mm -hmm. a, actually, she looked like an older woman cosplaying as a schoolgirl. That was kind of freaky. It was a schoolgirl with the face you'd expect someone like Junji Ito to draw. <laughs> I did wonder, okay, if these used to be magical girls, who was before them? And who's the one actually controlling all the magical girls? And or not magical how, girls. I'm sorry. Who's controlling all the administrators? And how long has it been going? When did it start? What was it before the internet? Right. Oh. Oh my gosh, that's a good one because some of these look like they're from like like the Edo period. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, how did you become a magical girl and then a administrator? Or was it like whoever is gifted a stick? Is it does a person become a magical girl as soon as they use it? I think they become it as soon as they get accepted. Like when they get targeted by an administrator, that's when it happens, I'd say. I don't I don't think there's a choice in any matter. I'm kind of under the thing it's a case of once you're chosen, you're chosen. Then later on they're saying that their boss is a mage, I believe. They use the term mage, I think. And I was like thinking, well, hold up, hold up. There's a mage now. Is this mage like a man? And it turns out whenever they show the mage, it's a little girl. Floating on this platform, emitting like energy that look like electricity. Is there look like those orbs where there's like electricity inside of it? And when you touch it, it creates static electricity, making your hair stick up. It looked like that. And surrounding that person were like dead schoolgirls. I'm like, where the fuck did these girls come from? And like, there's like sticks next to them. I'm like, what the fuck happened? How long has this been happening? I had so much questions. I had many questions and some of them were not answered. Okay. Some of them were not answered. <laughs> so do you think you'll be continuing with the manga? 
Yeah, I would. I definitely would because I have questions. I haven't started with the manga. I was going to. I had that in mind. But then, you know, Final Fantasy fourteen distracted <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, Final Fantasy fourteen are the reasons that these episodes have become more sporadic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, another thing. So when they first show the message about the apocalypse happening, uh, so I was watching this with my husband, and we noticed that like the little soul-looking things going into the light look like sperm, and we're like, "Are those sperm? Is that a sperm? Like, what is that? Why does it look like a sperm?" So we were thinking like berserk. <laughs> If people don't know what Berserk is, it's like a it's also a dark show where there's a lot of layering of dark magic and sexual stuff. So I was like, why does it look like a sperm? I'm pretty sure that's a soul, but why? <laughs> why? It it just it looks too much like one. <laughs> I think it's just for the iconography. And sometimes when you see like ghosts in Japanese media, you do see it kind of look like a blob body with a tail, which you could say looks like a sperm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, that's why. That's why I knew it was supposed to be like a soul or a ghost. <laughs> but that tail was like so thin and wiggly. I was like, <laughs> And it was going to, you know, a ball of light, <laughs> like, like an egg. <laughs> uh, don't come into the light. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like thinking, okay, is this apocalypse thing a rebirth? <laughs> Are these souls going into that, that? orb that ball of light because that is the vessel of life <laughs> and then after apoxa big bang boom new life <laughs> i was analyzing this <laughs> <laughs> i know after you and your husband watching it i got a message from him <laughs> you just basically say fuck that ended <laughs> oh yes yes He's uh, so pissed off with that ending. Oh gosh! <clears throat> so let's let's lead to let's talk about what happened leading to that ending. So we got all these magical girls together. Jim is being played by Aya's Kaname. brother Kanami. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, he w he finds out about these sticks basically from Nijima because she's like fucking stupid. And oh, one thing about the sticks, each person's stick is something different. Like Aya's is looks like a toy gun that shoots out a puff of smoke, which is in the shape of a heart, which transports people in this to any location she thinks of. And that's why then people die on the train tracks at the beginning, because she was going to commit suicide on the train tracks. And also the, her cat was killed there. Uh, Suno's is a cell phone. Which, if she's in a room with someone, all their names appear, and she can decide who does and doesn't get frozen in time. And Najimi's is a pair of panties. But one of the things that people that happens when the magical girls are using their sticks is it changes their hair, and they bleed. I, I bleeds from her eyes. Uh, Siono, I believe, bleeds from her mouth. And with Najimi's being panties, you can kind of guess where she bleeds from. But she dyed her hair, so when she was using her stick, no one would notice. And when Kaname kind of finds out about all this, he wants everything he can get out of it. And he goes down a dark path fucks everyone over. And he gets his comeuppance. I know when I saw the end scene, we'd be like, you fucking deserved it, you cunt! <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So the reason why I was so mad at Najima is because because she had a crush on him and she fell for Konami's tricks. She just told him everything. She told him about the about the magical girl site. She told him about the sticks. She told him who had what. And from all that information, Konami just planned everything. And there's this part where Nijima, she has a fan. And I totally thought the fan was going to kill Konami. I was like, yes, this guy's going to kill the brother, even though he's a little creepy. But I support him, even though he's a little excessive on his adoration for Nijima. Nijimi, not Jima. Nijimi, Nijimi. Like, I really, really want him to be so obsessed, like a Yandere, to kill Konami. But that didn't happen. Oh. No, because Konami was, like, just too smart for him. So, Nijima's power, her sixth power was mind control to make people her slave. And so, Konami used the panties to tell the slave to walk into the ocean and stab himself. It was like, no! And I was, I, I didn't think anyone else could kill him, to be quite honest. I was like, that was my last hope. And then Aya, she saw the whole fucking thing. And she didn't tell any of them. She didn't tell any of them what the fuck happened. She saw the whole thing. Fortunately, one of the other magical girls had a stick that read minds. So this person read the mind and kind of helped out, but... Konami was still able to cause some damage, but Nijima finally realized how much she got used and she killed Konami. Oh man, it was brutal. She got like a broken glass bottle and just shoved it into his throat so he wouldn't make commands. Oh, it was glorious. So we had that, right? We had Konami. Then we had Serena. Serena turned out to be a bad magical girl, the one that Nana made into a magical girl to steal the sticks. And Serena was just hell-bent on getting Aya. And I hated Serena at first. I thought she was just a bully out of nowhere. But I did like Serena, even though she was like a bitch. And I thought it was on call for, for her bully on Aya. But once I learned why she was bullying Aya, and she was just really frustrated with Aya for not doing like common sense stuff, like saying thank you or acknowledging. Or saying hi. I could see why Serena was irritated with her. But I thought her bullying did get too excessive. Like uncalled for. And I was really worried when she became a magical girl. Because she was hell bent against Aya. Like she wanted to kill her. Which I thought was uncalled for. Because she only wants to kill Aya. Because she thought Aya killed her friend. But her friend got killed. Because she was trying to get this guy to rape Aya. So it's like. uh, Your friend kind of deserved to die. <laughs> you shouldn't be mad about that. You're, you're being really biased here. And then. Uh, Serena gets a redemption arc. Which. I was like, yay! And the reason why I was supportive of her because she was actually putting the work. Like, she was getting stuff done. She was helping out. And then so we get all this stuff, all these ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. Like, our energy is high up, man. We are thinking, like, okay, they're building up. They're building up to something huge. And then we get to the battles of the administrators. The big battles, like, dun, dun, dun. So we get to the battles with the administrators. They're trying to capture one and get more information out of them. And this is where we learned that the administrators were magical girls. So, you know, dies. And she is being told, oh, congratulations. You are now an ad administrator. We need you to do this. And so she fights against our fellow magical girls. And then, you know, Aya helps her overcome that. So she knows a good guy now. And they beat Nana. And the end. They show the bits of parts of the mage. 
the leader of the administrators. They show some administrators. Oh, and they show like some guys that work with the administrators. They show that bit. They show some of like one of the guys capturing Aya's brother, Konami, torturing him. Ooh, that looked good. That torturing. Uh, that was quite satisfying. I think he got raped. He, he, I read a little bit into the manga and I can confirm he did. Okay. So yeah, he did. And the show ends there. <laughs> That's where it ends. We got all these questions. Thank God there's a manga. And the manga has finished. So that's why my husband was so upset with the ending of the show. It's like, it just ends like that. And it seemed like Aya was the main protagonist, but it's like she didn't do all of the work. She was there with, we are friends. I love you. I care about you. I care about you because you're the one who opened my heart. You're really important to me. And others are like, let's beat this person's ass. Let's make things work. Let's do stuff. Let's make things happen. And Aya's over here is like, emotional. Lots of emotion. Because I liked the other Magic Girls so much, I wanted to see them more. And it ends with just Aya. <laughs> but yeah, it's a case of... The manga does continue. The manga is now finished. So if anyone wants to, you can buy that and read through it. And... I, I'm still working my way through it. So, and I'm not spoiling ahead of the anime. So if anyone wants to do that, you can read at your own peril. But I would say that Magical Girl Apocalypse is also worth reading. Because you get to see the idea that would become Magical Girl Sight. You get to see these creatures that just ground killing people and all that they heard them say is magical and it's very very dark and it's very gory even more so i'd say than actually magical girl site but i don't think the story is as developed since i mentioned nana and enjoying that i'm as a villain i'm kind of curious poor question what's everyone's favorite anime villain Ooh, that's a good one there's a lot of people who like anime villains. I remember one time uh, during the stream, someone asked, who's your favorite villain? It's like, oh gosh, there's a lot of villains. <laughs> <laughs> Can we narrate this down? <laughs> I'm Lehua Superfina, host of Podcasts Across Worlds. You can find me on all social media platforms at Lehua Superfina. Weekly, I upload videos about video games, manga, and candy masks on youtube.com slash Superfina. I also stream every Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays on twitch.tv slash Superfina. Hi, I'm Spirit Shot, co-host of Podcast Across Worlds and also content creator, streamer on the channel you'll find in the description. And one of the upcoming shows is Tinfoil Talks, where we deep dive into bullshit in video gaming. We take a topic and we find out how it got there, why it's there, come up with some excuse until we believe it ourselves, and then put it out into the stratosphere. And that concludes our episode of Podcasts Across Worlds. Thank you all for tuning in. Keep reading manga, keep watching anime, and keep listening to Podcasts Across Worlds. We'll see you on the next episode. Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump. <laughs>